So beautifully formed, brought to life by God's own breath, crafted from the planet's dust, God's own image carved in flesh, but not one righteous man. and beauty stained. Far from the safety of God's side, innocence traded for a
Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our morning service on this uh, lovely sunny morning. It's uh, great to see there's a chill north wind outside, but we've got the heating on, uh, and you should be uh, plenty uh, warm enough here inside the building. Good to see you all this morning, and welcome to you as well if you're joining us uh, on our live stream at home. It's great to have you with us as well. A particular welcome to you if you're a visitor or you're new to us uh, here for the first time, either in the flesh or on the live stream. You're very welcome, and it's great to have you with us. I think the various uh, instructions as to what we need uh, to do uh, are all pretty well known now. They've been up on the screen before the service. Uh, you've seen social distance, uh, use the Bible, and if you wish, the order of service on the shelf behind you, although everything will be on the screen as well. And uh, of course, I'm afraid I have to ask you not to sing. Uh, you can sing in your heart. I suppose you can move your lips behind your mask, uh, but uh, we, I'm afraid we mustn't be able to hear you, apart from our authorized singers that is so uh, please don't sing but sing in your heart uh, and if you brought anything in please take it out with you as well i just like to say thanks to the uh, half dozen or so people who turned up to clean the church uh, in the middle of the week thank you very much uh, quite a great clean went on there that's much appreciated 
Um, just to say as well that the ladies' book group uh, and the home groups meet uh, by Zoom uh, during the week as usual. Um, our giving proje project for aid, Anglican International Development, for the microfinance uh, projects in Kenya and South Sudan remains open. Please use one of the envelopes uh, in the pews for a gift to that if you wish. And also our, our long service uh, collection uh, for Sue uh, Atkin after 18 years as church warden uh, and uh, Brian and Zeta Earthwell after 16 years as treasurers uh, remains open. And there's a specific uh, receptacle for that. It says service gift and any other gifts, including the AID envelopes, please put in the other receptacle. They'll be uh, available on the way out as they were on the way in. I think that's uh, all I need to say by way of uh, notices. So now let's stand uh, and uh, the words of our introduction will appear on the screen. Let's stand and we can say, even behind our masks, and uh, we are allowed to make, uh, make noise when we speak, if not when we sing. So uh, let's join together in reminding ourselves of why we are here. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Well, our first uh, hymn now speaks of the love that brought Jesus to earth to save the lost. And of course, as we continue our sermon series looking at the Apostle Paul's second missionary journey, we realize that Jesus was seeking the lost through Paul as well. And of course, that he is still seeking the lost today. The uh, first line is, come let us sing. Well, please sing in your heart. Let us sing of a wonderful love. Come let us sing of a wonderful love. Well, do please uh, sit down now as we come to a moment of quiet before we have our prayer of confession. Mm. 
And so bearing in mind that Jesus came to seek the lost, to seek sinners, and that through faith in him we have complete forgiveness for all our sins, we join together in the words which are now on the screen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought, word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, it's now time for uh, our Bible reading, uh, and it's the next uh, in our series from the book of Acts. And so uh, it's... Uh, if you're looking in the church Bibles, it's on page 1,113. I'll say that for Ivan as he makes his way out here. And it's uh, Acts chapter 17, verses 1 to 15, page 1,113. When they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As was his custom, <clears throat> Paul went into the synagogue, and on... Sorry, I have to take this off. I can't see. <clears throat> As his custom was, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and proving that Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ, he said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and not a few prominent women. But the Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob and started to riot the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other brothers before the city officials, shouting, These men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here, and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decrees, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they put Jason and the others on bail and let them go. As soon as it was, it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Bereans were more of a noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. When the Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God in Berea, they went there too, agitating the crowds and stirring them up. The brothers immediately sent Paul to the coast, but Silas and Timothy stayed at Berea. The men who escorted Paul brought him to Athens, and they left him with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Ivan, uh, very much indeed. Well, the final verse of our next song could certainly be said to uh, explain the Apostle Paul's outlook on life. And it's perhaps especially uh, relevant to us as we ponder during this pandemic, as we, because it causes us to think uh, about life uh, and about death. So we're going to sing now, or we're going to sing in our hearts now, uh, with a prayer you fed the hungry. Please stand. Shall we just uh, pray together as we stand? O King Jesus, the one uh, we hail as our King, we pray that you will now rule in us through your royal word. We pray that you will help us uh, to be like the Bereans, receiving the message with great eagerness and examining the scriptures now as we listen to see if what uh, I'm saying from the front is indeed true, as in, indeed to be applied in the lives of those who serve you as their king. And we ask it, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. Well, do please uh, sit down. Do keep uh, 
your Bible open so that you can uh, be like those Bereans, examining the Scriptures from uh, Acts 17 to see if uh, what I'm saying uh, is indeed uh, true uh, to what uh, God's Spirit has said in His Word. And I want to uh, begin this morning by asking you uh, how you feel about the idea of mission. How do you feel about the idea of mission? That is the idea that the church has got something to do in the world, something to do to the world, or something to take to the world. I guess most of us agree with that. We don't think that we Christians are here just for ourselves, do we? So we support the Bethesda Mission Orphanage in India, and presumably we're glad that someone obeyed Jesus' instruction to go and make disciples of all nations and brought his disciple-making message here to the island of Britain. So we're glad about that. But now let me ask you how you feel about mission now and mission here. And not just a broad concept of outreach, which might to just to be just be about the church being some kind of a religiously flavored subset of social services with a broad vague kind of idea of improving the life of the community but about mission as making disciples here and now in west norfolk or north cambridgeshire or south holland for those online by the way that's sort of holbeach and Long Sutton, not Rotterdam I'm talking about there. So making disciples here and now in West Norfolk, North Cambridgeshire and South Holland, in mission as in evangelizing, sharing the evangel, sharing the gospel of Jesus with people here and now. And not just the church as in the vicar and the youth minister and one or two other kinos doing it, but the church as in all of us being engaged in the mission of Jesus, the mission of the gospel. How do you feel about that? Well, if you're like me, and I'm the vicar, if you're like me, you feel a little bit less keen on the idea then. Okay, the principle of mission, Jesus taking the gospel to all nations, making disciples, yes, that's great. But the practice here, now, me, I'm a bit less keen about that. Someone telling me the gospel of Jesus so that I could come to him for salvation, for forgiveness, for meaning and purpose in life, for eternal life. That's fine. But me becoming the someone who then tells someone else, well, with that, I'm just that bit less comfortable. But if like Lydia and the jailer, whom we've uh, heard about in our last couple of sermons from the book of Acts, Lydia and the jailer in Philippi, if like them we have become believers, have come to Jesus to be saved, then we know that sharing what we believe in order that others might be saved too is part of the deal, isn't it? We know that that is part of it. Now, of course, the world we live in is different in many ways from the one in which Paul shared the faith, but the core of the human problem, rebellion against, estrangement from, and the coming judgment of the God who made us is exactly the same, isn't it? And we who are Christians believe that the solution is the same as well. As Paul told the Philippian jailer in Acts chapter 16, verse 31, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. The, pro the, the problem is the same, and the solution is the same. And Acts chapter 17, verses 1 to 15, where we are this morning, give us a map for mission. Could we have our first slide, please? We have a map for mission. Now, this is no uh, map with uh, countries on it and uh, routes or anything like that, 
But the three points which I'm going to draw out begin with the three letters M, A, P. And they do show us the way to go in this business of sharing our faith. Now, our time is limited, so straight in with number one, make sure, make sure you're sharing the genuine article. When you're sharing your faith, make sure that what you're sharing is the genuine article. Now, to state the obvious, or what ought to be obvious, this means you need at some point to mention Jesus. Now, that might sound like a joke, mightn't it? That might sound like a joke. But so many Christians are afraid to mention Jesus, aren't we? Now, of course, we want to be sensitive, so we won't be pummeling people with Jesus straight off. Indeed, we won't be pummeling people with Jesus or anything else at all. But for Christian mission, evangelism, outreach, witness, to be Christian, it will need to mention Christ. As Peter and John uh, told the Jewish council, the Sanhedrin, in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, they said, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And so, in Thessalonica, Paul the Apostle talks about Jesus. But not just saying that this guy, Jesus, is a really good role model to follow, or a great source of comfort for the harder times of life, though he is both of those, of course. No, see what Paul did say about Jesus. Acts chapter 17, verse 2. As his custom was, Paul went into the synagogue and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and proving that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ, he said. So speaking to this audience of Jews who knew from the Old Testament that the Christ or the Messiah would come, Paul pointed out from the Old Testament that what? That the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. And that in his suffering on the cross as a sacrifice for human sin, and in his resurrection, Jesus of Nazareth had fulfilled that role. So he showed from the Old Testament the Christ had to suffer and be raised, and then he showed them that Jesus had fulfilled that role. This Jesus, I, he said to them, this Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ. Now, of course, Jesus himself had also shown that the Old Testament taught that the Messiah had to suffer and die. Think of what he said to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus in Luke chapter 24. And indeed, our book groups who have read and are reading God's big picture are coming across the same truth all the time, that the Old Testament points explicitly in many places and implicitly throughout to the Christ who would suffer and die. And those are always the critical elements of the Christian proclamation about Jesus. And so when we get to a moment of sharing our faith, when you get to that moment where you might actually say something to someone about Jesus, and of course it's never going to be perfect, we might stumble, we might falter, we might for good reason not get it all out on one occasion or even a number of occasions, and afterwards we might regret what we didn't say, but when we get to that moment, our goal is to share the genuine article. And the genuine article is Jesus. Jesus crucified and raised, as prophesied in the Old Testament and as proclaimed in the New Testament. So that's uh, our first point. Make sure you're sure sharing the genuine article. And now on the screen we have our second point. 
Avail yourself of obvious connections. Okay? Avail yourself of obvious connections. Now, avail might not be a word you use every day, okay? Um, but I needed an A. And if, if I'd used the word use, we'd have then got a MUP for mission, and I thought a MAP for mission would be better. So I was trawling through the thesaurus to try and find a word that began with A, okay? So there we are, for now. Avail yourself of obvious connections. Now, you see, when Paul got to Thessalonica and Berea, he didn't immediately head for the town hall to find the mayor, the most important person in the place. He didn't, for that matter, head straight for the brothel. A lot of people in Thessalonica, it was a seaport, headed straight for the brothel. Paul didn't head straight for the brothel in order to share the gospel with the least moral people he could find. No, he went first to the synagogue. In part because he knew that those he found there would have some background to what he was talking about. They were Jews who were expecting a Messiah out of the scriptures they read and studied. So he went where there would be some background. So Paul's first stage in evangelism here in Thessalonica and Berea as elsewhere was to go first, if I may put it this way, for the low-hanging fruit. Now, it's October. We've been picking apples and pears, haven't we? You don't straight away get out the ladder and go to the very top straight away, do you? You pick the low-hanging fruit that you can see in front of your nose first. That's what I've been doing with mine. I only got the ladder out yesterday and finally made my way up to the top to get some pears, you know. You pick the low-hanging fruit first. And that is what uh, Paul did here in these two towns as elsewhere. So let's just bring that principle down into our part of the world in the 21st century. Where will we find connections for the gospel? Connections of which we can avail ourselves. Where are the bridges, if you like? The bridges over which the gospel might easily cross. Well, however different the uh, pandemic might make it in 2020, most people around here will still be celebrating Christmas in some way or other in a few weeks' time. Yes, it is only a few weeks now, sorry about that. Most people will be celebrating Christmas in a few weeks' time, won't they? And of course, it's an obvious time for us to share what we believe it's all really about. Perhaps by bringing them to a service. We will be having services here. We're sorting out all the logistics of that. There will be services here. They will be live streamed. You might bring them here. You have to get a ticket for some of the services because of the way we're going to have to operate it. Or you might say, why don't you watch it online? So invite people along to a service at Christmas. That's one obvious connection you can use. Or perhaps it might be by plucking up the courage or by praying up the courage and actually asking someone, why do you think Christmas means so much to me? Seeing what they say, opening up a conversation. They might say, well, it's because you're religious. You could say, well, it means there's a bit more than that to it, isn't there? You could open up a conversation, saying to someone, why do you think it matters to me? And then what about COVID? You don't have to wait till Christmas. Issues of life and of what matters in life, of relationships, issues of death, are bound to be in people's minds, aren't they? And these, let's face it, these are all Jesus's and the Gospels and so our home territory, aren't they? This is what the Gospel addresses. Life, death, relationships. So perhaps we might pluck or pray up the courage to ask someone, a family or a friend, what COVID has caused them to think about life. What's, has it made you think? Has this, you know, find your own words. But use the obvious connections. That was number two. Avail yourself of obvious connections. Number three, prepare yourself for a mixed response. Prepare yourself for a mixed response. In both these towns, Thessalonica and Berea, Paul got a pretty good response 
didn't he? Indeed, in Berea, as, uh, as we heard, and as I used in my prayer at the beginning, they received the message in Berea, verse 11, the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Doesn't get any better than that, does it? The, uh, the, the rabbi with a synagogue like that was a, was a pleased kind of guy. Any vicar with a church like that is going to be happy. It doesn't get much better than that. And in Thessalonica, some Jews, and literally in the Greek, a much multitude of Greek men, and not a few prominent women came to believe. And in Berea, many Jews, and not a few Greek men and women. So a good response, but it wasn't all positive, was it? Some just didn't believe, and others became downright hostile. They stirred up a riot in one city and then pursued Paul and his friends to the next city as well. And we're told that the reason for that hostility was jealousy. But of course it didn't proclaim itself as jealousy, did it? It came out as an unjust allegation of sedition and high treason in verses 6 to 7. And this is just a sign of the way opposition to the gospel isn't too fussed about the truth. It's not what we can say about that. You might explore that in the home groups, middle of the week. But opposition to the gospel isn't too fussed about the truth. So we must expect opposition and must remember that the opposition to us might not be too fussed about the truth either. So if you get one of the old chestnuts like, you know, being thrown at you by someone saying, how can you believe in God when there's so much suffering in the world? Or what about all the other religions? Well, remember that it might just be a cover for some other reason that the person has got for avoiding the word of the Lord like the changes to their lives uh, that they know it might mean. So we expect opposition, but we expect conversions as well. Okay, in our time, in our country, though not all the rest of the world certainly, our country may seem disinterested in God, ignorant of his word, and bent only on its own prosperity and consumption. And so, for us, it might not be a much multitude. Uh, it might not be uh, many. We might go times without even some. But he saved us, didn't he? He saved us, didn't he? Whether we came to know the Lord gradually through sort of being brought up by parents uh, who were Christians or who encouraged us to pray or Sunday school over the years or whether we had a dramatic experience like the Philippian jailer or whoever else. He saved us, didn't he? He brought us to know him and he certainly has more people he will save. So we need to pray that he will do so and be ready for him to use us to share what we believe. And as we do so, it can help to remember the map for mission. Make sure that what you're sharing is the genuine article. Avail yourself of obvious connections and prepare yourself for a mixed response. Beyond that, it's up to him. Let's have a moment of quiet before we pray, shall we? This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ, Paul said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and not a few prominent women. Our Heavenly Father, we pray uh, that you will have a harvest here in our part of the world, here and now. 
And we pray that you will help us to remember the map for mission, making sure that uh, it is Jesus, Jesus crucified and raised, whom we share. Making use, availing ourselves of the obvious connections we have and always being prepared uh, for the mixed response that the gospel will bring. And we ask it in the name of our great King Jesus. Amen. Well, in our next song, we sing the praise of the one uh, who those people in Thessalonica and Berea uh, found to be the way, the truth, and the life, and to whom one day countless worshippers will sing one shared song, whether they're from Thessalonica, uh, Berea, Terrington St. Clement, or wherever else, one shared song to honor the Lamb. So let's stand for our next song, All My Days I Will Sing This Song of Gladness. Please do sit down while we pray together. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the gospel. Thank you that we do indeed have good news to share of forgiveness of sin in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and of a new relationship with you. Please give us confidence that the gospel really is true and that it can stand firm against the threats of modern society and thinking. 
Thank you that you are sovereign and that in grace you have called us to be yours. Stir in us, we pray, a new determination to share good news with those around us. For Jesus' sake, amen. Lord God, thank you for all the different places you have put us in to live and to work. Thank you for this village. We know that there are many here who do not acknowledge you as Lord and who do not even see their need of forgiveness before a holy God. Thank you for all the times and places where we meet with people who do not know you. Please may our lives and our words speak of you. May we have the courage to be explicit in what we believe about you, Lord Jesus. We mourn the loss of so much of our families and youth ministry during recent months. Please encourage Mark and his team as activities begin again. We pray especially that children from non-Christian families would reconnect with us and attend again. We pray that Rock Zone may soon be able to restart in the primary school. For Jesus' sake we pray these things. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we know that your Son was despised and rejected, and we know that there were people who turned away and ignored Jesus' claim on their lives. Please give us the courage to be to speaking for you, to be unafraid of rejection. We pray for the church nationally to be prepared to stand for orthodox belief and practice. We pray especially that as the church faces issues of human sexuality, that it will main, remain steadfast to your word. For Jesus' sake, amen. We pray for those near us who are unwell at present. We pray that you will be close to them, assuring them of your love. Please hasten their treatment in these difficult times. We pray for Daniel and Monica who were married here yesterday. Please would you bless them in their life together. For all our church activities this week, please give us all the strength and grace we need. May each one of us know you with us in our Bible reading and in our service. And so we draw our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us as we say together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, David, very much indeed. As we uh, close now, we're going to remind ourselves of our ongoing role in proclaiming the genuine article, proclaiming uh, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, who suffered and was raised. So we're going to stand um, while our singers uh, lead us and we uh, join in with our hearts in the song, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. Let's stand. Yeah. 
Do please sit. Well, we've come to uh, our final prayer, uh, and uh, let's just have a moment of quiet as we uh, think about all we've been uh, considering this morning and come to pray. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have proclaimed the Christ to us through those who told us the truths of Jesus, of his death and of his resurrection. We pray that you will help us to be willing uh, and indeed joyful to be counted worthy by you to share that same message with others. Help us, we pray, not to be silent. Grant us courage, we pray. Grant us wisdom. Grant us gentleness and sensitivity along with our clarity that we might make Jesus known to those around us. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, this morning. Um, I'll say goodbye to those on the live stream now. So uh, goodbye. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we hope you're able to join us again. Uh, and so we'll drop the live stream now. Thank you very much. Uh